Doing a world conquest in E4 can be either easy or hard depending on the nation you're playing as. One of the easiest world conquests in Europe by Universalis 4 is as the Timurids, which can upgrade themselves into the Mughals after grabbing a few lands from Delhi and snaking into northern India. Now the starting situation for the Timurids is fairly decent. They start with a ton of cores on a lot of their vassals with the exception of Sistan over here, as well as the rebellious nation of a jam which broke away from Timurids just a little bit prior to the start date of E4. So there's two main things we need to handle at the beginning, namely we gotta handle our vassals which can be a little bit disloyal, but do not be fooled by this, they're easy to get back into check. First we're gonna get our government interaction, we're gonna get the liberty desire minus 15% and diplo reputation plus 1. Second we're gonna get the strong the cheese that offers again minus 10% liberty desire and uh, diplo relations plus 2 and that means we can do our Timurid leader leadership mission because they are now all back to loyal. One more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get royal marriages with them. Take note, you can get royal marriages with all of them except Transoxiana. You gotta wait for one month before you get that royal marriage. So make sure you do get that royal marriage before anything else. Getting a royal marriage lowers the liberty desire of your subjects by 5%. Other ways of lowering the liberty desire include deving up their lands. Each dev click is another 5% liberty desire lowered or placating local rules which offers minus 10 liberty desire for the cost of 20 prestige. Of course our primary target is going to be a jam which we will be attacking right after we can on the 11th of December. Until that point we're gonna get some rivals too so let's go with the Mamluks and with Delhi over here. Considering we got Delhi as a rival we can probably ally Johnport. Yes we can. Let's send this one our diplomats back. We're also gonna get our advisors and we're gonna get the free company. We're gonna need to get one loan for that. We're not taking the burger loans just yeah, you'll see in a few moments why we're not taking the burger loans. Before that, don't forget to adopt the titles of Mia Khalifa, denounce the sex practices, and unify Islam. We're also going to start converting some of these heretic scumbags over here. And hey, speaking of heretic scumbags, if you're enjoying this run and you enjoy my content in general, consider subscribing. It would really help out the channel a lot and encourage me to make more videos like these in the future. And if we get 5,000 likes in the first week after this video is out, I'm going to do a new Afghanistan true era of Timur run where we conquer all of India as Afghanistan before 1490s. That's just 50 years from the start date. But only if we get that 5,000 likes in the first week after the video's out. After the first month passed, you will be able to get the royal marriage with Transoxiana. You cannot get this done before the first month. So make sure you don't do anything until you get that done. So you lower their liberty desire to 17%. Next up, we're going to give the plus one mana privilege for all three of these states, and we are not giving any more privileges, even the burger loans we're not taking, because we want to keep the influence as low as possible, so we grab as much crown lands as possible once we annex a Jam's land. This does mean we get extra liberty desire from subject development, plus 100%, which translates to 65% with Transoxiana. However, that's going to lower after we start the war, and we can just dev them up a little bit so they become super loyal again. The time for war is here. We're gonna set up Senman as the war target and I guess we can even cobaladrate these guys. I don't think I'm gonna take anything from them but just to have them cobaladrated since I can. I'm also gonna attach some of these units like Farza's army to my army. The rest of them I'm gonna set up so they can actually siege down enemy provinces by themselves and as I was saying Transoxiana is fairly loyal now. If that goes bad then we can just dev their provinces or placate them. Nothing major. Now we we can also get Shahroor as the leader of one of our armies. He is an actual decent general, but he is 67 years old, so the likelihood of him dying is fairly high. We gotta be careful with that. If he passes away, all of our vassals will be disloyal until we managed to get the provinces from a jam, in which case they will not be disloyal anymore. I'm gonna try and get a little bit of extra PP by insulting the uh, Mamluks, and I've also eclipsed Delhi, so I managed to get up to 36 power projection already. I'm gonna get a claim on Baluchistan also, since I want to attack Baluchistan afterwards to unify my home region and have an easier time just blobbing out in every direction after. And of course, Mazandran just gave Kondoteri to a jam. What a bunch of schlumblags, as I like to call them. Meh. Well, you know, on the bright side, we're gonna get one stability fairly soon. We have religious unity issues, so we can get that after a while, not just yet. The uh, Transoxianas have become a little bit disloyal, so I'm devving them up so they can be back to loyal, of course. We want to keep an eye on that. We don't want them to actually uh, break away fully from us. 
especially not during this war. As with pretty much any war in U4, taking out the smaller stacks whenever you see them around the map is the best way of winning engagements fast and with little to no losses on your side. Also as expected, every single siege in this freaking game is taking way longer than it should. There goes pretty much the entirety of uh, Akoyunlu's armies. Oh, I'm sorry, Ajam, are you actually trying to unsiege your capital? How dare you? No, sir, you were not allowed to take back that. That is officially ours now, and you can go schnapple dupe yourself. After taking these two fortifications, it's really just a matter of carpet sieging the rest of the country, and we've won the war already as it is. Oh, yes, Big Brain AI, they recruited the free company right next to where my army is, so they're not gonna get a month's tick, and that means I'm essentially gonna be able to wipe them out here. They got actually help from their... Uh, friendos but still i'm gonna wipe them out in the province of kashan where my allies wipe them out come on why you guys gotta call the glory from me like that but yeah the point is that now the enemies have only 7,000 units the uh the mazandrani kondoteri and that's pretty much it we've also managed to fully siege down shervan so i'm probably going to vassalize shervan i know what you're thinking there's a lot of vassals as it is that is true there is indeed a lot of vassals but one extra vassal never hurt no one right maybe maybe it did hurt me a little bit but it's fine play off the dead of these guys and dev up their province once more there you go they're back to loyal and shervan will be loyal also after we improve relations with them for a while akko yunlu would be willing to give me a white piece and i'm gonna take it because i don't care about him too much now let's bring our units back so we can piece out the the main war target here wait a second what the f georgia's at war with shervan uh yeah about that georgia i'm not gonna let you uh take stuff from my vassals so it's consequence i just assume leadership in the war against you and i'm gonna schnapple dupe yo plus we can do the peace deal with the jam there's two things we can do now there's this which is my preferred peace deal or we could also get the vassals by fully annexing a jam because remember when you fully annex a nation you get all of their vassals and subjects as your subjects but like i said i i prefer this deal i don't need extra subjects i already have way too many i'm gonna let them keep four provinces is fine with me coalition only a jam so literally nobody important and we've got a ton of new cores we just gotta core up our delan aside from that we pretty much got all of the other stuff as our cores lower the warriors auction core it up we can also do expand the timurids now which gives us a little bit of extra stuff because we are in a defensive war we can call in john poor but i'm not gonna do that and we're gonna make full cores out of these bad boys here if we go to our vassals look how loyal they are now they absolutely love us plus because we took all of that land we got 12 percent crown lands. that's an extra 7.9 percent what we start with and i feel like i'm gonna get one more vassal here in uh in georgia because they got all the cores on the other stuff so might as well just make him a vassal right and did i just become the vassal master here the vassal swarm master or something now whilst we're at it we're also going to be attacking uh, baluchistan so i basically get rid of anybody else in the persian region and i'm the only one here let's go ahead and send our units over there after this we're going to attack both uzbek and the most likely kashmir Delhi, all that stuff in fact i forgot to do something I should set this area here as a vital interest so my vassals can get claims on it. Or, I think I have a mission that I can get claims on this, don't I? Oh, I got a ton of missions. I just need to have 100% force limit and 60% manpower. I kind of forgot about this, not gonna lie. I actually kind of forgot about this. We could have gotten the claims on this initially by just um, exploiting some of our manpower at the very beginning. That would have been up to 60%. Now it's gonna be pretty much impossible to do it. So I guess um, <laughs> I made a little bit of a mistake boys don't make the same mistake as me oh on the bright side though our double just restarted a war with uh, a gem to reconquer the province of miane so that's actually going to be good for us because if our double fully annexes a gem then we can attack our double ourselves and take back our cores in a gem the best part about having a vassal swarm helping you out is the fact that they do most of the uh, hard work here transoxiana having sieged quite a few forts as it is hey looks like we can also get military tech four that's going to help us out since the military tactics makes a huge difference as does the morale of armies of course and uh can we get a uh, count on the amount of wars that akoyunlu's got check this out one two three four five <laughs> these guys are at war with pretty much everybody around them aren't they oh my lord i wouldn't want to 
to be in their shoes right now. Oh, would you look at that? Transoxiana is even hunting down the enemy armies here. They're hunting down Gujarat's remaining troops. I absolutely love you, Transoxiana. You're literally my favorite vassal. Just don't tell the other vassals, okay? I bet Gujarat never expected this to happen from uh, just helping out Baluchistan, did they? But hey, now that we're here, we might as well just enjoy our time and uh, maybe even take a few provinces for uh for strategic go into india reasons yep i do think taking the province of tata is more than fair i'm even letting them keep a lot of the other stuff so i am a benevolent as they say uh enemy benevolent enemy that's that's what i am here okay let's also go ahead and uh, fully annex these guys now coalition surprisingly nobody only a jam so nobody anyone needs to care about and look how beautiful we are i love clean borders boys now let's make these guys also our vassalos and again, only a jam cares. A jam is such a caring nation, guys. It's unbelievable. Sadly, our double actually got annexed by a jam. So our dreams of getting what's left of a jam have uh, have pretty much perished now. Since we have a little bit of piss, let's uh, seize crownlands, and we went up to 20% crownlands after just six years from the start of the campaign. We also can give out the rest of the privileges now. Not gonna lie, I I kind of forgot to give them out. So so yeah. Just don't judge me, okay? Come on, bro. Deteriorating relations with the Ulema. Okay, okay. I see how it goes, brother. I see exactly how it goes. The game just decided that, uh, yeah, why would Ludi ever get decent RNG here? You know what I'm saying? On the bright side, the rebels are fighting each other right now, so we got that going for us. Also, looks like Delhi just munched onto, uh, Ladakh. So I think I'm gonna be munching into them right now. Oh, actually, this is Ladakh. Who was this? This was Kashmir, right? Yeah, I think that was Kashmir. All right, next war is these bad boys i just got to finish off my rebels first no shack roar just passed away yet on the bright side everybody is still pretty darn loyal over here with the exception of uh, georgia because you know georgian people am i right guys am i right georgian people <laughs> Now, because we are filthy rich, we will be relying on mercenaries for the upcoming wars. That's why I'm recruiting the Grand Company in Kunduz. Says we're going to be starting the war against Delhi now. Let's go ahead and attack Yes Maximus. They're allied to Sindh and Bengal. Oh, hold on a second. Maybe we can take some Sindhi lands too. Looks like we can. We're going to be Kobala Dorado them. Before the war, I'm going to be enabling scootage on Khorasan, Afghanistan, and Fars because I want to be uh, integrating all three of the these nations in 54 and the war against Delhi might take a little bit longer than that you know I just realized that the claims that I'm using on Delhi are actually Khorasan's claims which is uh it's totally totally not weird of course Khorasan being over here getting claims on Delhi makes absolute sense just uh don't think about it too much really that's uh, that's what it's all about really and um and oh did I just forget to... Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, I am a genius, boys. I forgot to cobalt sin. Which means I'm probably not going to take any provinces because I don't want to get the AE for now. I need to get a lot of provinces from here and then expand again into the east. So I want to manage my AE as well as possible. That being said, I am going to crush their army so I can rob them of all the money they got after. And with a little bit of Carpathia siege, because I think we can get the money now. Well, you cannot get everything, but I'm just going to do this so I can use this army again against uh, Delhi instead of wasting it against Sindh since I cannot take any lands anyway. Oh, it's already 54. It's actually 55. So I can start now integrating these bad boys starting with uh, Afghanistan as well as Fars and Khorasan because we have cores on all of the provinces of Khorasan and Fars. The integration is going to take one month. So after one month's tick, we fully integrate both of these guys. That's why we want to give out the Amir's integration policy as soon as we start integrating them because if we don't give this out, we get minus three Diplo reputation plus it makes it a little bit faster by five percent to annex vassals diplomatically so it's totally worth it there we go one and a two we can now do the next mission conquer lower persia 400 ducats a ton of claims as well and we can also do indian raid which i think i could have done from earlier but i forgot about it which gives us claims on lahore as well as sindh sagar area after we conquer punjab we get another mission done here but that's a big area i'm probably not going to take in the first 
Post War against Delhi. The age-old question of whether we uh, cancel the alliance with Delhi or we go for full money is, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to cancel the alliance with Delhi so we don't need to worry about the Bengalis afterwards. As for the first peace deal against uh, Delhi, what we're going to go for is this particular snake, yes, Maximus. We're doing this because, end of the day, we need uh, both the provinces of Doaba as well as the provinces of Delhi to form the Mughals. And these are basically some of the richest provinces that they have anyway. So we end up being super rich and we also end up becoming eventually the uh, overpowered Mughalius Maximus. You might have been wondering, Ludi, why did you not annex Transoxiana considering that you have cores on all of Transoxiana? Well, obviously the reason is because Transoxiana's got more cores on Uzbek and that's basically why we're going to get their cores back first before we actually integrate them, which is why the next war is against Uzbek, whilst at the same time we're going to start another one against Karakoyulnu here. We just got to wait for our boys to finish killing off the rebels. Don't you just love it when you have the entirety of the western parts of your country red? I feel like that's a really unique feeling, isn't it? Knowing that everybody here... Wait, 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 wait. Hold up a sec. Hold up. I just realized something. Hissen Kaifa is massive. <laughs> uh, okay. They also would ally me if I was at peace, which, um, which brings me to the fact that I forgot to actually check if I can ally or vassalize anybody. I can diplo vassalize. Oh my god, I'm loving this. His and Kaifa is going to be my next diplo vassal, hands down. And this is going to be an excellent foothold into the Ottoman lands, which historically got their asses handed to them by the Timurids just a few years prior to the start date of our particular campaign. Bayezid being uh, not the most fortunate of Ottoman sultans. Oh, dude! Bohemia just became the em Speaking of, you guys should check my Bohemia Hussite Emperor in the 1400s run. Link in the description below. Oh no, Mushasha, did your troops just get mushish mush into a pile of bones? Yes, yes, they did. That was a bad joke, I know. I am, I am aware. It's also a really great idea to rush for the only fortification that your enemy has, in my case here, the capital of Uzbek Tumen, being the only fort that they have. That gave me a ton of war score. I did also take the province of Turkestan since I can release from here uh, Kazakhs afterwards and check it out. Kazakhs got claims on all of Uzbekistan plus a huge chunk of Chagatai as well. So definitely vassal material right there. I'm gonna try and speed up this war a little bit since I need to be at peace to form the Mughal Empire and that's when I start snowballing like absolute crazy. Considering how my truce is over with the jam and they're allied or better yet guaranteed by Karakoyunlu. I'm gonna peace out Karakoyunlu first, which actually means I'm gonna start with the co-belligerated nations of Mushasha and Mazandran here. Full annexation of Mushasha, as well as for Mazandran. Unsurprisingly, almost nobody gives a schnapps about Mazandran, because we all know they're scumbags for having given Kondoteri when they were supposed to just mind their own business. Why you do that, Mazandran? You see, you brought it upon yourself. It's all your fault. Take note, Iraq's got cores on a ton of provinces here so of course we're gonna take only one province in the south so we can actually release Iraq from it we're also giving back the course to our beloved uh, Georgian vassal and we're grabbing this as well because well simply because I want to take Melikadis you got a problem with that broski you got a problem with the man taking Melikadis for himself hey we even completed our agenda amazing so now they're gonna join in because they're guaranteeing uh what you call them so that means we're gonna fight him once more you are not the brightest nation in the sky are you Karako I'm gonna try and go for a quick white piece with them now in this war. We can also do a few more wars in this area whilst we're waiting for the second Karakoyunlu war to finish, clear up these lands, and yes, I, I actually realized I am not the sharpest tool in the shed because I forgot to click the Mughal button when I was at peace, so um, yeah. Alright, so that's it with the, a gem. I could cancel some of their cores apparently, don't really care about it too much to be fair. John, poor Biapaz, Karakoyunlu, literally nobody important. Arrivederci Jam. That means we can do the next mission. Control Upper Persia, gained, giving us 100 admin points. As well as for 15 years, 20% less attrition. That's not too bad. We can get another 100 admin points from integrating uh, Transoxiana. So that's my next goal before I actually click the Mughal button. I'm also going to have a period of proper 
chilly I'm after this particular engagement. Since I need to start devving up a renaissance, I am pretty far behind when it comes to uh, institutions and I need to get those institutions. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. They're getting institutions? What? Wait, they're getting institutions too? Hold up. Okay, alrighty. I mean, no, no, I'm just gonna spawn it in. It would take way too long for me to wait for these guys to actually get the institution get in their particular lands. Can you actually just fall at 28 percent please no no of course not a it did fall at 42 percent so that's still something right i'm actually going to transfer all of these over to georgia since i want to give them all to georgia it's a little bit of aggressive expansion but it basically means that i've consolidated all of the east holdings and i don't need to worry about the uh, trebizond for the nearby future anyway it also means i got a border with the ottomans now so uh whenever i'm ready for that particular engagement i'm going to be schnapple duping them oh hold on a second mamaluk and his and Kaifa are at war with Karakoyunlu. Oh, 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 that is not Gucci. Okay, they're losing against them too. Oh man, I've been improving, I've been influencing them, I've been doing everything because I want to vassalize them, but that if they don't have any provinces when I vassalize them, that is a problem. So, I don't know anymore what, what I want to do with them. Let's see what the outcome of their particular war is then. Now take note, annexing Transoxiana is not instant anymore because they have five provinces that they had cores on that we do not have cores on. So it's going to take a little bit longer, but it's okay, it's still worth it because we can do both of those missions down the line and we'll use this particular period to just chill and i guess we can also integrate these guys actually let's do that too it's a good period to also get rid of the multiple rebels that we have all around our country and for that matter i'm going to be assigning my armies to autonomously suppress people here this this should fix all of my issues really one very important thing you should always remember is to lower autonomy this is my third time lowering autonomy just remember to do it once in a while after you've conquered provinces and core them up you want to have your autonomy as low as possible i'm also going to start spawning in uh, renaissance and shushtar because this is a silk province and uh it's one of the cheapest i can develop so it should be fine it is a shia province though so maybe not in shushtar yeah you know what i'm just gonna spawn it in my capital it's a little bit more expensive but it's actually worth it actually it's not more expensive now that i think about it because it's uh 24 development the other one's six so that means we're getting more per dev click so check it out we are getting 4.16 here for developing for clicking once whilst just as an example here for one click we're only getting 1.16 because this is a seven development province as compared to the 25 in this one so yeah just click yes maximus we're wasting all of our points but it's worth it because once we've gotten renaissance spawned in here we don't need to worry about being behind technologically compared to everybody else in the world whoa boys uh why is astrakhan alive okay all righty i think i'm gonna get myself a brand new vassal in the great horde lands which apparently have been replaced Plays by basically Crimea. <laughs> and Hiss and Kaifa is still worth it. Screw it, man. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Let's get them as our next vassal. What the schnapps is this? Intrigue in Herat. Okay, sure, whatever. Nobody gives a schnapps, man. Wait, what? Finally, we managed to integrate these guys. All right. Oh my God, they had 70. They had how many units? Oh, dude, I'm over my force limit now, aren't I? <laughs> I just got 28,000 units from integrating Transoxiana. That is just amazing. All right, control Eastern and and western steps meaning we got another 100 admin point now we could technically go for this as well 100 admin points from this and a few more from this for this one we just need to have assemble an army done have an army bigger than 80,000. we just gotta recruit oh, we can do this too man let's go it's a good thing that we're doing this because we're gonna need the extra units for the wars to come anyway all right let's go assemble an army unite home region daria go even more mana points and i um, think i'm i have enough not to do do this boom shakalaka renaissance is present in herat and also herat is producing now three point something amounts of uh, paper there you go 3.52 paper which is a huge amount of paper let's face it so also make sure we make these full states and yes we are a little bit over our governing capacity it is to be expected considering the amount of lands that we just got but it's not a 
big deal. We can just give Ulema land rights and we can also give another land rights, say the Merchant Guild. There you go. So we are Aokeski. We're going to have three separate army groups for expansion. We're going to have the Northern Army Group where we use them to expand into the North. The Western and the Eastern one for pretty self-explanatory areas we're going to be expanding into. Let's face it. Truce is also over with Karakoyunlu, but we don't have our vassals. So let's release uh, Monsieur Iraq over here and with them we can attack afterwards Karakoyunlu for all of these amazing cores look at all that schnapps over there boys for that matter we can also release from Turkestan Zenashon of Kazakh oh no I forgot oh I'm such a dumb dumb I actually forgot to do this before integrating Transoxiana now they're gonna get five provinces <laughs> so I'm gonna lose oh boy that's that's just small brain I mean these are three development provinces to be fair but I should have done it before I, I honestly this is just small brainiest Maximus boys it's worth it still because look at the cores that we have now that we can feed them afterwards but hey the most important bit is that we will be changing now to the Mughals yes sir traditions and ambitions yeah thank you so much amazing and we can establish the dimmy estate also it would make us lose access to the brahmins you know what i'm gonna keep the brahmins for now i'll i'll, I'll keep the brahmins and i'll think about the dimmies later we also have more crownlands now we got 38 percent crownlands and we can give out some new privileges here including the establishment of the rashput regiments and a few other amazing privileges. The best part, however, is the assimilate culture mechanics, where by assimilating various cultures, we get specific bonuses. For example, advisor cost reduction, core creation cost reduction, artillery cost, and so on. All we gotta do is conquer every province within that particular culture group, so we've pretty much gotten the Persian one now, with a couple of exceptions that we'll be getting in the next war against Karakoyunlu, and the same once we have the uh, Hindustani group, which is the northern bits of India we get the core creation cost reduction so that's why we will be rushing for that one next alongside this one and of course the step on as well there's more specific things about the moguls and I'll be more than happy to show you guys all of those uh, specific things but it's been a while since we started this particular campaign so if you guys want to see a second bit for this if we get 7,000 likes in the first week after this is out I'll continue this campaign otherwise for 5,000, we'll do that special true heir of Timur by 1490. So until the next time, check out this awesome Ottomans run.